set aside your weapons and lose yourself in the blade trance. Arcolite galvanizes your armor and hastens your movements, and when your knife finds a target, it discharges a snap of annihilating current. For as long as a trance lasts, you are the very shadow of death. Welcome back, Guardians. Today we are continuing with the Destiny Lore subclass series, and this time we are covering the Blade Dancers. I know this seems a bit unfair considering I only recently covered the Golden Gun Hunters, but the comments in that video were hilarious and surprisingly really good-natured considering I essentially called all Hunters arrogant. You instead proved that you had a pretty good sense of humour just like your Vanguard mentor Cade, so thank you for that. With E3 on the horizon and the playable Arc Strider inbound, I also thought it was a perfect time to cover the Blade Dancer. I'll cover the general lore and attitude of Blade Dancers, which is quite different from the Gunslingers, and then cover potential legendary Blade Dancers within Destiny's universe, one of which may be Shiro 4. A big thanks to Lydell and Splashback on Discord for collating all the in-game text for me uh, for the Blade Dancer. Also, a quick reminder about my Patreon page, all donations go towards employing artists to create the Destiny Law comic book series. Gamma Trap is working very hard on the next one, which will be out just before Destiny 2. Here is a sneak peek. Also, you can read all of my Destiny Law scripts on my website, link is below. And lastly, I will be on Twitch as soon as I upload this. Today is Law Night, feel free to come and join. This is Marlin Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny Law episode. Let's begin. As I mentioned in the Gunslinger Law video, gunslingers are often described as elitists and arrogant. Not my words, by the way, this is how Lord Shax and Akura Ray refer to gunslingers. However, Blade Dancers are seen very differently by the Vanguard. Whilst Ikora Ray may mock the Gunslinger, she has quite a different tune towards the Blade Dancer. The sheathed lightning quest line reads, Firearms are more than enough for a warlock to carry into battle. Knives always seemed extraneous to me, until I saw what a hunter could do with them. Everything has its place. Ikora Ray. In fact, within the lore, the Blade Dancer is consistently described with fear, death, and lethality. Have a listen to the Blade Dancer Grimmel card. There's something to be said for the blade. A knife won't jam. A knife won't run dry. A knife is very, very quiet. Leave the noise and fire to others. There's work to be done out there in the dark. Monsters that deserve death, delivered quickly, silently, and without mercy. And have a listen to the questline dialogue, which reads, You want to know fear? Face down a blade dancer, all sharp edges and crackling death. Then you'll know fear. Cade 6. And this from the Arc Blade Grimmel card. Set aside your weapons and lose yourself in the blade trance. Arc Light galvanizes your armor and hastens your movements. And when your knife finds a target, it discharges a snap of annihilating current. For as long as the trance lasts, you are the very shadow of death. And finally this. Remember to clean your arc blade. Sometimes the arc energy doesn't quite vaporize everything and they start smelling funny. The final quote for me apart from emphasizing the lethality of Blade Dancers, like all the previous quotes, it also emphasizes the dark sense of humor of Blade Dancers. I mean, they're, they're literally poking fun of enemies they have killed with an arc blade. This is quite the contrast to the attitude of gunslingers, who have a much lighter sense of humor with a strong sense of competition and banter. So we've established that Blade Dancers are very dangerous and a tad creepy, but what makes a Blade Dancer so lethal? Well, there are a couple of things. Firstly, in general, they are described as having no honor. They are not interested in a fair fight. Their abilities are suited to ambushes and assassinations. Just have a look at the name of their abilities. Backstab, Stalker. They are there for the kill. This is reinforced by the questline which reads, There's no honor in how the Blade Dancer's Arclight seeks out targets. 
and they revel in it, Lord Shax. And the backstabber bounty which reads, If blade dancers seem a little unfair, it's because they are. No room for honour in a fight. Cade 6. So firstly, their attitude is one thing that makes them very dangerous. They have no honour. Secondly, blade dancers are also very dangerous due to their speed. The questline reads, The only way to defeat the speed of a blink strike is to stop it from occurring. Commander Zavala. And this, blade dancers lack the striker's strength, but even a striker must admit the blade dancers move at a velocity strikers can only hope to match. Commander Zavala. And this, the arc blade movement represents a blade dancer's top speed, which she can only maintain for so long. As with many light based techniques, timing is everything, Lord Shax. And this, they'll see the arc before they see the blade dancer, and by then it'll be too late. Kate 6. I love the difference in attitude that the Vanguard have towards the blade dancers in comparison to gunslingers. It really cements the dangerous nature of blade dancers, and you don't see this back and forth banter that you typically see with the gunslingers. The other really interesting thing about blade dancers that sets them apart from the other hunter subclasses is how they manipulate the light when blade dancing. The technique is described in a similar fashion to how warlocks wield the light, and that is to become a conduit to wielding the light and channeling the light through meditation in a trance-like state. The arc blade Grimmel card reads, Set aside your weapons and lose yourself in the blade trance. Arc light galvanizes your armor and hastens your movements, and when your knife finds a target, it discharges a snap of annihilating current. For as long as the trance lasts, you're the very shadow of death. And the quest line would also go on to say how the arc light reflects the hunter and how it is alive. It reads, the Blade Dancer's interpretation of Arcolight is a reflection of the hunter herself, seeking targets to sink light or a knife into, Lord Shax. And this, a Blade Dancer's Arcolight is alive. It seeks threats like lightning seeks metal, but you have to help it. It relies on you for the timing. As you can see, the Blade Dancer's lack of honor, willingness to do anything to win a fight, speed, stealth, and uniqueness with wielding the light easily justifies their lethal title. Lastly, before moving on to some potential legendary blade dancers, let's briefly talk about Rasputin and Stealth Tech. As many of you likely know, in the Promethean Code mission, Kate suggests that blade dancers stole technology from Rasputin to allow them to go invisible. The mission reads, Ghost, these crypto systems follow no logic I understand. I'm not sure it can be modified to work on a Guardian. Cade 6. Where do you think Blade Dancers got their cloaking ability? Grab the codes, I'll upload my modifications. Eris Mort. If the Vanguard are satisfied, we can finally end this. Return to the moon. Steal Crota's soul. Now whilst many players may have heard that before, you may not have heard what Tevis says during the questline. He says this. Don't believe Cade. Half the things out of his mouth are lies, the other half are fibs. My favourite line of his, oh easy. He likes to say he stole the secret of stealth tech from Rasputin. And that's how blade dancers learn the trick. Ha. Tevis. As far as I'm aware, there are no other pieces of evidence that supports or denies the use of warmind technology for Hunter's cloaking ability. So you need to make up your own decision on whether you believe Cade or Tevis. Now let's move on to potential blade dancers in the Destiny universe. Once again, thanks to the Discord for their suggestions. As far as I know, I cannot think of any hunters who are outright confirmed as blade dancers in the lore. I'm sure Cade can blade dance, but that is not his main subclass. However, Shaw is my top guess for hunters who are blade dancers. One reason for this is because of his chest piece. He is wearing the Hunter Exotic Lucky Raspberry, which improves Arc Bolt Grenades for Blade Dancers. The Lucky Raspberry item description reads, No one has ever died wearing me. It's true, she leaves the unworthy before they fall. This description implies that the armor is alive and that it leaves its owner if they are not worthy. For this reason, it seems that Lucky Raspberry may be a unique exotic. 
you'll know that sometimes you have multiple exotics, for example, multiples of Cirrus Regime was produced, whereas sometimes you can only have one exotic in Destiny's Universe. The item description makes me think that the only one lucky raspberry to exist is the one that Shira is wearing. The chest piece that Eris Morn has, whilst it does look similar, may in fact be different. The other reason why I think a Blade Dancer suits Shira 4 is his general lore of being a scout and assassin. Shira 4 is referred to as the Vanguard Scout and his sidearm the Trespasser reinforces his assassination of the Fallen. The stealth tech of the Blade Dancer is perfect for both scout and assassination missions. For more information about Shira 4, as him being an assassin, please see my video about his very unique cape. I also feel like a sidearm is a perfect weapon for a blade dancer. They prefer close quarter combat and I feel like a sidearm is a perfect companion to the knife. I liken this to how you would expect a golden gun hunter to engage from a distance and maybe be more likely to use a sniper rifle. So as you can see, Shuri 4 is not confirmed as a Blade Dancer, however his surrounding lore I think is well suited to being a Blade Dancer. There are two other characters who also could be Blade Dancers. One is Lord Gellion, and the other is Sai Mota. Lord Gellion is an Iron Lord and was obsessed with knives, to the point where he had named them. The Lord Gellion Grimoire reads, Gellion wears three knives. The names are Swiftling, Ockham, Quietus. They did much of the work at Black Lona, in silence and at speed. The fact that the card says that he used the knives with silence and speed, to me implies that he is a blade dancer, due to the characteristics of blade dancers being speedy and quiet. However, you could argue that he may be a gunslinger because of the use of knives. However, Lord Galeon has a very dark sense of humour, and I think this is much more suited to the Blade Dancers than the Gunslingers. This is how Lord Gellion justifies having bone armor to the other Iron Lords. If all of you were cut down around me, your light drained past return, and my armor was shredded, for instance. There's a long silence. You always know what to say to make us feel better, Ephrodite says. I could hide under your bodies until the threat left, then I'd make a helmet from your skulls and a breastplate from your ribs and gloves from your finger bones wrapped around mine. There is a longer silence. So yeah, a very dark sense of humour from Lord Gellion. I think you could argue he's either a blade dancer or a gunslinger, however my best guess at this stage would be blade dancer. Lastly, I wanted to mention Sai Mota. Sai was a member of Eris Maud's fire team. When Eris Morn and her team are within the Hellmouth trying to track down Crota, Sai says this. Ariana 3. From what Tolan has described, we are on the path of Crota's dreaded hand. Sai. The hand is falling back toward the screams beyond these tunnels. Ariana 3. Screw it. You ready? Sai. My knives are eager for another dance. Ariana 3. You speak little, Sai Moda, but I always say the right things. The fact that Sai says my knives are eager for another dance seems to suggest that Sai is a blade dancer. So Shuri 4, Lord Gellion, and Sai Moda are my three guesses of legendary blade dancers. Just remember Titans and Warlocks. Gunslingers are much more likely to shoot you directly in the face, followed by some friendly banter, whereas you're more likely to see the arc before you see the Blade Dancer, and by then, it'll be too late. That concludes this latest Destiny Lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel, leave the word lethal. Alternatively, if you'd like to hassle the Blade Dancers, leave the word creepy to acknowledge their dark sense of humour. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlon Games. Peace.